I'm scared of falling asleep and never waking up again. Some causal research is needed. Sleep labs are booming. Operations and seminars promise cures for snoring. It's a lot of effort, but the goal is clear, to drift off in the arms of Morpheus. A good sleep is half the battle. If you don't get that, you get grumpy. I'd give up everything else if only I could get a good night's sleep. Berlin, 11.40 p.m. Christina Bach has forgotten what it feels like to have a relaxing night in bed. Since her daughter's birth 21 years ago, the 53-year-old has been suffering from extreme insomnia. I usually fall asleep when I'm reading or watching TV. As soon as I get ready for bed, I'm completely awake again. I go to bed because I think I'm ready for sleep, but then I just can't sleep. Christina Bach is one of an estimated 5 million people in Germany for whom the simple act of falling asleep has turned into an unachievable task. I'd love to be able to sleep. Who wouldn't? Wakefulness despite tiredness, a grueling routine for Christina Bach. If I realize that I've managed to sleep two hours in a row, I call that a big success. That only happens very rarely. She often tosses and turns for hours trying to fall asleep. The pressure of having to be fit for work the next day only makes the situation worse. People need at least six hours sleep each night. Christina Bach gets no more than three. I constantly feel tired, but I can't sleep. Huh? Nearly quarter to two. Chronic sleep deprivation causes other issues. Christina Bach complains of heart problems, an inability to concentrate, and extreme fatigue. I started taking medicine to help me go to sleep, to help me stay asleep. I've tried everything. I haven't found the solution yet. I haven't found anything to give me a good night's sleep. I've had terrible moments, but nobody notices. As soon as I'm outside, I'm there a hundred percent. I'm sometimes impressed with myself. How I can do that? But there are times when I want to give up. Then I have to pick myself up again. Nobody has any idea how I'm suffering. Nighttime sleep has become a scarce commodity. A hundred years ago, people slept an average of two hours more a night, nine hours instead of seven. The trend to cut down on vital relaxation is continuing. Kenneth Roberts is on his way to work. He has a three-hour train journey ahead of him. That means three hours during which he's not allowed to sleep. The business consultant is plagued by a fate he shares with one man in two. I know what it's like when I see other people in the train snoring loudly. It's unpleasant. I'm embarrassed for them. I'd never nap in public places. Say you're on holiday. It's stressful for the first few days, and it'd be easy for me to fall asleep by the pool or on the beach. But I try very hard to stay awake. Sleeping isn't just a social problem. Kenneth Roberts suffers from headaches and daytime drowsiness. For years, he's been looking for a solution for his nightly problems. There are many purported remedies on the market, promising to provide the much-needed solution, but it's not as simple as the adverts make out. Many of them don't work or have unpleasant side effects. Kenneth Roberts is no stranger to the plethora of products on the market. 
yet he too is still suffering. With increasing age, one in every two men and one in every four women starts snoring. The consequences are dangerous. According to current studies, snoring increases the risk of heart attack and stroke and can lead to impotence. Kenneth Roberts is alarmed. In recent months and years, I've been checking the new products on the market. I've tried many things, but nothing has helped. I even tried a new remedy from Britain, but nothing works. Christina Bach still can't get any rest. She doesn't get the dream sleep that relaxes the mind or the deep sleep that regenerates the body. She can't even sleep on holiday. Her situation seems hopeless. I've tried everything. I've moved my mattress to the living room changed my orientation. It's said to play a big role. I've tried to sleep on my balcony in summer. I've tried to sleep in every room in the house. Fresh air feels nice when you can't sleep. Maybe that will help. Let's try it. Another attempt. Restful nights have been an alien concept for Kenneth Roberts for years. His loud snoring is also having a negative impact on his partner. Every night, she tries to fall asleep before he does. You can't help focusing on the sound, and it seems amplified. That's when it starts. I try to wake him up, and he makes an effort not to snore. And in the end, we basically prevent each other from sleeping. Because of his snoring, Kenneth Roberts has already been banished from the bedroom. His partner can't cope with the noise any longer. Every evening, he sets up camp in the living room. The sofa grants him nightly asylum, but romance gets left by the wayside. Now, the couple are hoping to be saved from their suffering by a new operation. Tomorrow, Kenneth will go under the knife in the hope that this will help his sleep and his relationship. Snoring, the enemy of romance, could soon be a thing of the past for Kenneth Roberts. The Berlin Charité Hospital is home to one of Germany's largest sleep labs. Christina Bach has been a frequent visitor for many tests. Tonight, she's hoping she will finally find out about the cause of her sleeplessness. It's high time. Her nerves can't take any more. I feel like I'm getting sick. I feel unsettled and I'm worried that something will happen that is irreparable. I don't want to say I'm panicking. I try not to think that something bad is going to happen, but it's getting worse. Women are affected by insomnia more than men are because hormonal fluctuations can trigger sleep disorders. Dr. Ingo Fietzer knows the disastrous consequences of wakefulness around the clock. Poor quality sleep affects our cardiovascular system. It increases our blood pressure, for example. It also has an effect on our weight. It's now known that those who don't get enough sleep are more at risk of becoming overweight. But the main thing is that bad sleep affects our mind, our memory, our concentration and our abilities. That's what causes those affected to suffer. Fourteen electrodes will monitor the patient's brain activity and muscle movements. An infrared camera registers every time she stirs. A rhythmic cycle of five sleep phases takes place during the night. 
Every phase lasts around 90 minutes. Humans spend a quarter of the night dreaming, normally. Mrs. Barker's not yet fallen asleep. Here you can see the muscles in her chin. There's still some movement there, and there are also disturbances in the brain. That tells us that Mrs. Bark still hasn't come to rest. Christina Bark tosses around for more than an hour. Then her body temperature suddenly drops an indication that she's fallen asleep. Not all waking in the night is abnormal. Here we can see Mrs. Barker's just woken up. The signals are going off everywhere. We can see the high amplitude here in her muscle tone. The blanket is moving. It will be interesting to see whether she'll drift back off to sleep after this period of wakefulness. It's already lasted half a minute. Wie man jetzt schon sieht, über eine halbe Minute andauernde Wachphase, ob sie danach gleich wieder in Schlaf findet oder nicht. I expect it will be a problem. Healthy sleepers can cope with some movement and carry on sleeping. But it can lead to longer periods of wakefulness in people with sleep disorders. The patient is still awake a full minute after having moved. Nach der Körperdrehung, dass die Patientin immer noch wach ist. Sleep disturbances involve many occupational categories. Anna-Marie Heuer and Wilfried Gehlrich are searching for the perfect place to sleep. Electro smog is thought to be a possible troublemaker in the land of dreams. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Heuer. The customer has not been getting any deep relaxation in his own home for months. I've been suffering from a sleep disorder for some time. Of course, I've had other possible causes checked out first, before considering something like this. What does it look like internally? Do I have high blood pressure or some illness? The location of the bed didn't make a difference either. Wilfried Gehlrich and his partner are convinced that electro smog can cause many different afflictions, from sleep disorders to cancer. However, nothing has been proved definitively by science. So, einmal messen wir. We're measuring the alternating electrical field. That's the field that's always present because of the installation of the wires and plugs in the walls. Every appliance that's plugged in has this field. Let me demonstrate on this radio alarm clock. There are more plugs down here, and there is also the voltage in the wall. Can you see that? Let me show you the problem. Could you lie down on the bed, please? Wenn Sie sich jetzt mal kurz auf das Bett legen könnten. Ja, mal Tierchen hier weg. Gib mir mal Tierchen. The problem is, the body connects itself to these fields and has a current flowing through it all night. That shouldn't be. We're measuring the exact voltage. We're going to try and get rid of it, at least for the period of sleep. The reading of the scene is a surprise. So. The reading is 7,000. That's very high. 7,000. <laughs> 7,000 is natürlich a ganz, ganz heftiger Wert. Christina Barg has survived the night in Berlin. Dr. Ingo Fietzer is evaluating the data of the past eight hours. The atmosphere in the sleep lab is a familiar one for the 53 year old. Even so, she hardly got any sleep. This is a typical profile for a patient who has trouble falling asleep and staying asleep because after waking up it takes a long time to fall back asleep. And what Mrs. Bark and other people suffering from sleep disorders feel in the morning is that they were awake for more than two hours when in fact they were only awake for an hour. We should spend between 15 and 20 percent of the night in deep sleep. She doesn't manage that. All in all, her sleep is of very poor quality. 
That kind of sleep disorder is intolerable. She needs treatment. Treating chronic insomnia is difficult. If you'd come to us years ago and told us you'd been sleeping badly for three or four weeks, we would have been able to do a lot with behavioural therapy instead of medication. Now we have the problem that your body is used to this sleep disorder and we want to get it used to normal sleep again. That's why you will need sleeping pills to re-establish the normal sleep-wake rhythm again. There's no physical reason for her sleep disorder. All of the behavioral and environmental measures have already been explored. Drugs are her last resort. I can say from experience that 60 to 80 percent of patients say their sleep improved after treatment. What we have a very tough time with is bringing back healthy sleep. That's not generally successful. That takes some luck. In 10 to 30 percent of patients, it's even difficult to improve their sleep at all. This is the fanciest address in Düsseldorf, the Königsallee. Kenneth Roberts is going to have his operation today. The outpatient procedure will take place in a private clinic. Dr. Antoine Ashman is contacted by snorers and their victims every day. Separate bedrooms are a very big problem. Once a man has been thrown out of the bedroom, he won't get back in very quickly. In America, snoring is grounds for divorce. This operation is the business consultant's last hope. This isn't Kenneth Roberts' first operation. In August, he had an operation on his nose, but it had the opposite effect of the one desired. He now snores more and louder than before. Usually, relaxed muscles block the airways, thus causing snoring. The typical sound is the result of soft tissue vibrating. I want to show you something else about the significance of breathing through the nose. When you are lying in bed, sleeping, you have to be able to breathe well, primarily through the nose and also a bit through the mouth. The airway definitely has to be open. In your case, there's a blockage here where the red arrow is, and this blockage reduces airflow. Snoring is more than a minor unpleasantness. New studies have confirmed that those affected are 67% more at risk of stroke. Kenneth Roberts feels extremely exhausted during the day. Before the procedure, the patient is put into a sleep-like state. That's the only way to create the constrictions responsible for snoring. Mr. Roberts has fallen asleep already. I'm going to check the position of his teeth, a very important factor. As soon as the lower jaw drops down, when the muscles relax, the tongue rolls back and causes a blockage. This blockage prevents any air from entering. A patient who drinks a lot of alcohol will have a more relaxed jaw. The same is true of someone lying on their back. That exacerbates snoring. The patient's airway is constricted. The tongue has slipped back. The soft palate is relaxed. The soft palate just flutters back and forth. But the constriction takes place around the tongue only. There are seven constrictions in total. This patient has at least four to five that need removing. A special probe is used to cause targeted scarring in the soft palate to tighten it. This then puts an end to snoring. Kenneth Roberts will also have to wear a brace to fix the position of the jaw. One hour after the anaesthetic, the patient is up again. Dr. Ashman is hopeful. He expects a good result. It's important for him to know that Kenneth will snore more loudly than before during the first week, but that it will get less over two or three weeks. He has to give this process time. Kenneth Roberts is optimistic. 
He has some pain in his throat, which is to be expected. But after his last operation, he looked like Quasimodo, he says, and he felt like it too. So this is a much better start for him. This has to work. This was his second operation, and if this doesn't work, we won't know what to do. Good. Four weeks later, the ban on the marital bed is lifted. The 53-year-old is breathing significantly more quietly, but the doctor's orders are strict. Little alcohol, a brace and firm weight control. Meanwhile, the search for the source of the electro smog is continuing. Radiation investigator Wilfried Gehlrich and Bernd Hildebrandt are examining the top floor fuse box. They'll just try it and see what happens. Has the current been reduced? The figure has dropped from 7,000 to 1,720. That's still too high. Ideally, it should be less than 100 and preferably zero. A high-frequency device detects mobile phones, antennae and cordless telephones. It's getting louder. That's from the base station. This base station is constantly sending microwaves through the house 24 hours a day. Even when you're sitting here working, you're sitting amidst all this radiation. I recommend you replace this with a low radiation telephone, which only puts out radiation when you're actually on the phone. Wilfried Gehlrich suspects that the wooden ceiling in the living room is the culprit. Wood isn't a conductor, so it's possible the electric fields are building up immediately below the bedroom. This is the fuse box for the lower floor, which controls everything from the kitchen, its appliances and the living room. The change is dramatic. The value has dropped to 100. We have now 100! This is a good result. A hundred is low enough. He now needs two relays, two demand switches, one for downstairs and one for upstairs. That will get rid of the current when an item is not in use. It will have to be connected to the fuse box. It seems this sleep disorder could be cured with the help of an electrician, not a doctor. And better sleep won't be the only benefit. He can even save himself 200 euros in electricity costs a year. That's a lot of money just being wasted. The villains are appliances on standby, such as stereos and televisions. The fix, having a standby saver installed. Two weeks later, Bernd Hildebrand had someone see to his electrical problems. He's had an easier time falling asleep since then, he says. Christina Bark has taken her medication as the doctor ordered. Eight months have gone by. The therapy has had some effects. I no longer have this intolerable condition I used to have where I felt completely exhausted and unable to go on. I was close to falling apart. I feel more rested. I feel better overall. My husband has noticed a change too. He tells me in the morning sometimes how well I slept. Of course, I still wake up a few times, but not for these long periods anymore. Those hours of lying awake at night are thankfully over. But these artificial aids aren't a long-term solution. I don't know how long I'm supposed to keep taking these medications. I want to be able to sleep without them at some point. The next interesting step will be to see how I sleep when I do stop taking them. It's worth a try. At the moment, she possesses a large array of drugs. For a few weeks now, she's been taking a medication that has only recently been approved. Here. 
This is a pure sleeping pill. I took that together with an antidepressant. That's when I really noticed a big difference in how I had slept. I was supposed to wean myself off that, which I did, and now I take this melatonin. My sleep has got worse again, but I hope it's only temporary. Diplomatic efforts to end the Gaza conflict are gathering pace with UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon and German Foreign Minister Frank-Walter Steinmeier trying to mediate a ceasefire. This as Israeli troops intensified their offensive moving into residential areas in Gaza City. The European Central Bank is cutting its benchmark interest rate by half a percentage point to 2%. The rate cut is the fourth in just over three months, and more cuts may follow if Eurozone economies slump further. Two weeks after the Czech Republic took over the rotating presidency of the EU, the Czech artist David Czerny has unveiled a controversial installation on national stereotypes at the European Council building in Brussels. Many EU governments have called the work offensive. Kickoff report. Two German soccer coaches abroad. Jurgen Röber at Saturn Moscow and Michael Kruger coaching Al Marik in Sudan. Fresh challenges, different traditions, new surroundings, and soccer as a common language. Cartoon Moscow. Kickoff report in 90 minutes on DWTV. von Linz. Im Poslingberg Schlössel verspeisen Gourmets die Original Linzer Torte. Eine Spezialität, auf die die Kulturhauptstadt Europas ganz besonders stolz ist. Wie gelingt sie am besten? Die Linzer Torte. Euromax in 30 Minuten auf DWTV. Das Neueste aus der Wirtschaft, rund um die Uhr. Und dazu viermal täglich ausführliche Analysen. Die Aussichten für die deutsche Wirtschaft. Die Wirtschaft im Journal. Auf DWTV. DWTV im Februar. Die Bären sind los. Auf den 59. Internationalen Filmfestspielen in Berlin. Großes Kino. Glanz und Glamour in der Hauptstadt. Die Berlinale 2009. Gekauft mit blutigem Geld. Beschlagnahmt und jetzt genutzt für einen guten Zweck. Das Eigentum der Mafiosi auf Sizilien steht immer mehr für soziale Projekte zur Verfügung. Ein Schritt gegen die Gewalt der Mafia. Blutgeld. Die Schönheit des Amazonas als consumers to form a consortium to pay for the fuel needed to restart transit through Ukraine. Kiev is refusing to deliver Russian gas unless it receives the technical fuel for free. 
Israel pounds Gaza, bombs strike the UN headquarters, a hospital and an international media center. Journalists from RT's Arabic sister channel were in the building during the attack. The UN Secretary General is in Israel pushing for an immediate...